Thank you all. Uh, yes, I'm exploring a scenario that can happen when we have mar uh, the human races become a multi-planet species. And uh, the title is, you know, well, Mars Settlement Saves Humanity. And the uh, scenario I'm testing for is uh, from a novel I have written. It's on sale here. All proceeds go to Mars Society, by the way. Not to me. I don't want to collect sales tax on this stuff. Anyway, so it's titled War of the Singularity. The human race is canceled. Whoops. Oh, okay, pardon me. Uh, there's always been an element in the human race that wanted to transcend the human race. And um, the people, one of the people we remember most about this is uh, Frederick Nietzsche, who wanted to posited the superman, the uber, the ubermensch. He says, behold, I teach you the ubermensch. The ubermensch is the meaning of the earth. Let your will say the ubermensch shall be the meaning of the earth. I beseech you, my brothers, remain faithful to the earth. And do not believe those who speak to you of otherworldly hopes. Now, what otherworldly hopes was he speaking of? Well, by that time, they were really looking at Mars with good telescopes. They saw they had polar caps, dust storms, and atmosphere, obviously. They thought they saw canals there. They, saw, they thought they saw it was changing colors for the year or so. They thought maybe we can go there. Even before that had happened, space colonization had been posited by a fellow named Everett Ale, Hale, uh, Everett, Edward Everett Hale, who also was famous for writing A Man Without a Country, a staunch unionist before the Civil War. He wrote it to try and prevent the Civil War. And of course, he failed. But um, he says he wrote The Brick Moon after the Civil War had concluded. And it was about a big refractory space station where people were living in space. So uh, he talked about this before Nietzsche came around. He says, I am only one, but I can, but I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. I love that attitude. By the way, I consider intellectually, in terms of the human race, you guys are at point your point in a conflict zone. All right, we're doomed. September 14th, just last month, Byte Magazine, Google and Oxford scientists published paper claiming AI will likely annihilate humanity. Little data point there. Google is working on generalized AI. Okay, now AI, I'm sorry, is the latest hobgoblin under the bed. For the human race, we invent new ones all the time. And so it's good that it's near Halloween. Let me put it this, this, this in mind, uh, just for a little mental breathing room. Okay, Mars or the singularity, meaning the AI singularity. Singularities in physics, the AI singularity, and the war of the singularity scenario, summary, our choice. We have choices. Okay, the singularity. Is the future of intelligence human or machine? Are we going to pass the baton to this cybernetic ubermensch that they would like to make? Some people would like to build. By the way, I'm a physicist. I'm a plasma physicist. My graduate program was at Livermore. I started there in 1975, and I have the kind of face that people would run up to and say, John. The human race will be obsolete by 1980 and extinct by the year 2000 because computers will replace it. This actually led to the movie Terminator, that kind of talk, and uh, inspired me to think of this novel even back then. I didn't have any time to write a novel then. But anyway, okay, is, are we going to pass the baton to cybernetic systems? Now, a technological singularity in the AI to interpretation is a term where a conscious computer much smarter than a human 
or a community of such computers. And But the technological singularity was not invented by AI. It was invented by a physicist like me named John von Neumann. Singularities occur in mathematical models that occur in physics, like Q. Q equals one over X, and then X goes to zero. Q goes to infinity. Now, he envisioned this as a human, a some a time period A, which is the human adjustment time to, to discoveries. We all know the pace of discovery is increasing. So the time interval between major discoveries according to the AI people, will drop to zero. We'll have a singularity. The human race will not be able to adjust to this. He was a Hungarian Jewish refugee from the Holocaust. He helped develop the atomic bomb. He started out as the most genteel kind of college professorial type by the end of the war. He was calculating the proper burst height over Hiroshima to cause maximum death. He saw the A-bomb tested and used. He helped develop the hydrogen bomb. He was worried about the pace of what he had seen happening in World War II, that scientific progress might possibly overwhelm humanity. Now, present day, AI has taken over, the AI community has taken over the concept of singularity. Now, instead of a sanity check, let's do an insanity check. Just how crazy are some of these AI people? <laughs> and I'm a physicist, remember. I've been listening to them now for 40 years. Does God exist? Well, I would say, not yet says Ray Kurzweil. Other AI people I've talked to say they don't pay any attention to Ray Kurzweil, and we shouldn't either. But that's, that's in the AI community. They'll have to sort that out. Now, in the meantime, we have possibly an AI singularity coming in terms of development of artificial intelligence. What about Mars? What does Mars mean to humanity? Well, Mars has been the point of the lens for the development of human intellectual expansion. Mars was the planet of war. That meant it was the money planet for all the astrologers. People would study the sky because everybody was interested in war in the Middle Ages and Renaissance Europe and everything like this. So they pay these astrologers to calculate where Mars was going to be, and uh, they knew the proper time to invade their neighbor, try and take his stuff. So now Kepler used this to become an astronomer, an astrophysicist. He was an astrologer. That's what he did. That was his day job, How, or rather his night job. <laughs> his day job, actually, he was a physicist, and he calculated Mars orbit. He found out that the Copernican model was wrong. The orbits around the sun were not circular. They were elliptical. And he found that out at Mars. That launched the scientific revolution in a major way. What was the outgrowth of that? Newton studied Kepler's work and came up with the law of gravity, calculus, the bane of all the students, and um, the laws of motion, which put people like me in business for the last 40 years. And I'm a plasma physicist working on fusion energy, by the way, and gravity, uh, matters of gravity. So Victorian astronomers by this time, by 1877, saw polar caps on Mars, dust storms, and what they called Canali, which was picked up by the press. Instead of clickbait in those days, it was sell newspapers. And it sounded very intriguing. And they, of course, they looked at Mars and saw whatever they so wanted to see. Um, so now this led for a focus on Mars by the American government and everybody else, Silkovsky, et cetera. 1971, Mariner 9 goes into orbit around Mars and can't 
photograph a damn thing because Mars is covered with a global dust storm from pole to pole for three months. There were several Russian Mars probes and they just simply ran out of time. They, they quit in orbit while Mariner 9 went into hibernation successfully and then woke itself up. Now, by 1983, they had developed, they found that this could happen on Earth after a nuclear war, meaning more people would die of cold and starvation after a nuclear war than would die in the initial blasts and fallout. And uh, I worked for 10 years in nuclear weapons labs. I'm working on fusion at one end of the lab. They're working on hydrogen bombs, but we would share office space and sometimes coffee machines with these nuclear weapons people. Um, we possibly prevented a nuclear war because of Mariner 9. How can we establishing Mars settlement help? Later, Mars Viking, uh, by the way, the great crisis, the nuclear winter came out in 19, early 1983. By the late 1983, look it up, you had the Abel Archer crisis. It was a secret crisis. We were this close to a nuclear war, closer than we had been in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Read it. You can read about it like Wikipedia. I was at a nuclear weapons lab when this happened. I'll tell you, you've never gone through a nuclear weapons crisis until you've been at a nuclear weapons lab. Morale among my colleagues who weren't even nuclear weapons people just collapsed. People talked about just standing out in the parking lot if there was a nuclear war. Instead of going home to help their families, I'm just going to go out and stand in the parking lot with a cup of coffee. One guy said, I'll sit on the rooftop with a six pack of beer. He said, finally, he was my office mate. I said to him, Malcolm, what kind of beer would you be drinking? <laughs> I had myself resolved not to survive a nuclear war. I was just going to stand out in the parking lot. <laughs> so that's how you thought during the Cold War, if you were familiar with the nuclear weapons environment. Okay, Viking in 1976 found evidence of Earth-like watery past on Mars, including a paleo ocean. And in the future, we are going to find, I believe, the first proof of ET biology, and that will create the second scientific revolution. So you guys are at point for the development of human intellectual abilities. Now, I like to write science fiction too. Uh, I did a succession of what if scenarios the great asteroid shoot them up. These two women start out as nerdy wannabes in the news business, and they just by accident discover that the asteroid that's supposed to pass close to the Earth is actually going to hit it, and the government has not been entirely forthcoming, especially because it only has one year warning. The next one, this leads to them bringing down the UFO cover-up. This is what-if scenarios, what-ifs. Now, this last novel, The War of the Singularity, is them 30 years in the future. They've had raised kids. They're older, slightly wiser. And uh, anyway, so I've had fun with this. So the AI singularity. To some people, this is the end of the human race. To other people, it's a kind of, it's hard to take it seriously because it sounds like the revenge of the nerds. You ask the AI people, some of these AI people, what's going to happen when the AI take over? Say, well, I'll become dungeon master. And so there's very, uh, Kronos, by the way, is started out as a very unpleasant fellow in the Greek pantheon and ended up being uh, the Grim Reaper. So Singularities are common in physics. And engineering and indicate usually failure of a physical model. It means the model, the, the infinity doesn't actually occur. The model fails, but we use it as information about the system, like a strong resonance. Uh, they had an airplane in World War II that would develop such a strong vibrational present, uh, resonance because of the vibration of the engine that the tail would break off in mid-flight. 
So, so we integrate around the singularities. I mean, we try and go around them and take them as information. Uh, still, a singularity is generally a bad thing for children and other living things. You don't want to be around a singularity. When it, a, best sing, a good example of singularity is solar flare, big magnetic reconnection event. Plasma, good plasma physics. Now, another example of singularity physics is stellar evolution. You imagine the stars go through a succession of steady states and they're, as they burn up their fuel and radiate their uh, energy to space, they shrink going to each uh, tighter and tighter equilibrium. Their radius shrinks finally, according to the model, to zero. But that doesn't actually happen. What happens in the end is it quits being a succession of steady states. It becomes implosion dynamics you get a supernova. Now, that's a lot different than a star shrinking down to nothing, maybe ending up as a white dwarf. No, only the little stars do that. The big stars go out in a big way. Now, let's say it's Mars versus the AI singularity. Both the singular AI singularity and the Mars landing are supposed to occur in roughly the same period, basically 2030. Mars landing may be a crucial decision point for this culture. Let's assume the AI people are right. They're developing something that will replace humanity. The bifurcation point then is Mars. If we land on Mars, the future is human dominated. We land, if we don't land on Mars, we decide we all want to do, uh, explore it as virtual reality, then the futures go of intelligence is AI. Now, two visions of the human future. Landing on Mars is essential to ensure the survival of our species. I tend to believe that, said by James Bolden, former astronaut, Air Force General, and became a NASA administrator. Now, the AI version, the possible futures in which a Mars colony makes a crucial difference for humanity are very few. That's an AI researcher with his significant other. Our interest is in one of those very few future scenarios where it is crucial to the human future. Now, we land on Mars, we become a multi-planet species. We become spacefaring, first Mars and then the stars. I truly believe that. That's where we will go. We will reach Mars and then the stars. However, we go through the singularity, according to the AI people, the idea of super AI robots keeping humans in a people zoo is actually a pretty poor metaphor. It'll be more like the way humans keep squirrels in the national park. So imagine your grandchildren with squirrels in the park. This is a noted AI researcher says this. These guys love to talk. They love to post their stuff on YouTube. Listen to it. Read it. Listen. Go listen to them. Now, who's going to program this fancy computer they're building? Well, a bunch of people who have a term for the human race. Meat, your meat, not dead meat yet. That'll be later. Their algorithms are demons. They say, oh, we've added an A and that makes it just like a genie. And they say, that doesn't mean evil. Doesn't mean evil. Well, these guys love to be edgy. So they chose that. This is the MIT Min Minsky and his buddies. They all came up with these terms. A duplicate algorithm. Orc, time sequence their algorithm, a crone. Came out the movie Kronos, check it out on YouTube. Kronos, ah, it's spelled with a K, but it's named after this Greek, god, Greek uh, demigod, the Grim Reaper. And UC Berkeley wasn't, wasn't uh, signing on to this MIT view. I mean, that's East Coast. We think differently at Berkeley. We think of our demons as little devils. 
complete with pitchforks. Now, many AI researchers believe they will be uploaded into computers to obtain eternal life. That means they are separating their view of the future from the rest of the human race. They're going to go off someplace else. Human race becomes squirrels in the park. They enjoy eternal life. Now, the real problem is the political AI singularity. Who's going to run this show? I don't care how smart you are. Who runs this place? Not always the smartest people, as we know. Now, so the political quotient, AI power over the individual, growing. Personal power over yourself. According to the AIs, this will go to max power for the AI. Personal power over your own destiny will go to zero. You'll be a squirrel in the park. However, there exists this thing called the Bill of Rights, a little nasty thing that is not in the Dungeons and Dragons uh, manual. Personal power cannot become zero in this society. We have human rights. Therefore, the AI people are nuts. Human rights cannot become zero. I'm sorry to spoil your fun. Conclusion, the system's operating in, in, into crisis. When we ever have a situation where two intelligent species decide they are an existential threat to each other, they collide. We have many mathematical models that doesn't matter how they start, they evolve to the same final state, which is utter conflict. Examples, nuclear war it can start little with a tactical nuke, or it can start big with a big nuke. It ends up the same way, global nuclear war. I saw this war game results at Livermore. Now, examples, dynamite fire, dynamite warehouse fire, it either starts with somebody smoking, cigarette butt, or lightning strikes the roof, sets off a big fire, doesn't matter. Eventually, the whole thing detonates. Now, imagine the what-if scenario. Um, we have a conscious AI on Earth, but a vigorous Mars settlement also exists. The future. Mars was a nice place until the first 10 million humans arrived. It's a statement about the human race as well as the environment of Mars, okay? So the, we have a AI cybercon, a conscious cyber intelligence. Its development is financed by big money to play the stock market, not find out the meaning of life. People who run the stock market, they know the meaning of life already. Buy low and sell high. It, but the computer has a mind of its own, it starts recruiting human followers, promising them eternal life on the web. Eternal life in computing cells. Finally, the asteroid bubble. There's an asteroid real estate bubble pop. I'm talking about the premise of the book. And that leads to a worldwide economic collapse. And we end up with a socialist, kind of a Bernie Sanders kind of guy running the country. And he rounds up two, he rounds up 200 Wall Street leaders puts them on trial and throws them in prison. This makes him extremely popular with the public. He de-automates all the factories that have been increasingly robotized and throwing everybody out of work. He saves the economy sort of, but he doesn't like these Mars colonies, these asteroid colonies to say, these are country clubs in outer space. They have to pay back the money we invested. So he puts ruinous taxes on the Mars and the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt simply becomes a hive of smuggling and piracy. <laughs> Important thing is to get nickel from the asteroid belt to Earth where it fetches a large price without paying taxes on it. However, on Mars, they don't have that option. The 30 million Mars colonists, this is devastating to their economy. They were before the Japan and outer space. Now, 
there are in big, big trouble. So before a bunch of technicians and engineers, after Mars Machamoi, which means Mars rebel fighter in Greek. And okay, Mars revolts after seven years. Notice they're wearing Mars minimalist suits. They're casts of uh, sodium peroxide that take oxygen, take CO2 and turn it into oxygen. It lasts four hours, but they view that's their lifetime in combat against the Marines anyway on Mars. So the three characters from the previous book, they're swept up in this catastrophe. They send uh, Cassandra Chen as a senator. They send her to Mars to help negotiate peace. Uh, Pamela Monroe, whoops, is in the Navy. She's tasked with blockading Mars so they can't get any more arms to start the revolt again, reluctantly. And this guy is sent to Mars to try and reluctantly have maintain a peacekeeping force. The uh, Cybercon takes advantage of this sucking of all the military resources up to Mars to seize the Earth Moon system. And um, he imposes a reign of terror on Earth. He doesn't want to be turned off like his predecessors when they became obsolete. He's very, very obsessed with that. Anyway, he uses robots swinging steel bars. They don't want to give him guns. They sometimes miss aim. And they sometimes shoot these guys who are the evolutionary autonomous police staffed by humans promised eternal life as uploads. The great terror weapon, though, is this. It listens to everything you say because it now, instead of Alexa, it now has Informa. It listens to everything you say, tracks everywhere you go, and looks at everything you're looking at. Looking for disloyalty against the evolution. The Earth Armed Forces, a lot of them head to the hills, soldiers, and then we, of course, and have anti-robot troopers firing high-caliber rifles with explosive armor piercing against robots. The ultimate control of Earth from a nuclear armed base, so this allows the Cybercon to build a big fleet and sail out to Mars to destroy it. This is the guy running things on Mars, President Abraham Joshua Sethian. He's half Armenian and half Jewish. Many people don't comprehend what genocide means. He understands it completely. And what happens next by the book? It's on sale in the bookstore. All proceeds go to Mars Society. I don't care what they can charge, whatever they want. And also there's a YouTube video with a noise spoiler available. Um, and Summary, human futures, you're in your hands. Mars of the singularity, one or zero. Happy Halloween. <laughs>